Okay, what's up everyone? This is Dakota with Tarmi, and in this video, I'm gonna teach you very quickly how to do four powerful technical analysis indicators. So we've got simple moving averages, Bollinger Bands, Relative Strength Index, otherwise known as RSI, and then the MACD, which is Moving Average Convergence Divergence, of course. So the whole point of technical analysis, and I'm not gonna sell you on the merits of it and whatnot, but it uses historical price data for stocks and bonds and ETFs in order to infer the movement going forward. So some of these indicators have buy signals, sell signals, and I will walk through why these four make a lot of sense and why building your charting in Power BI definitely makes the most sense. So let's jump right in. Okay, like I do with all my videos, we're gonna take you from the very beginning to the very end. And the end in our case is useful charting with technical indicators on our stock of choice, which in this case is going to be Tesla. And let's go to the very beginning by looking at the Power Query Editor. So I have a simple text parameter here. Uh, it has the ticker for Tesla and with this, we can change it to any other stock you want, Apple, Microsoft, whatever. And I am not going to walk you through exactly what API I'm using because I've already made two videos walking through two different APIs for how to access historical stock price data by date. So those will be linked above and linked down below. Please watch those. We're not gonna repeat content here on this channel. So what I've brought in is the open high, low close, as well as daily volume for Tesla stock. We've got adjusted close. Tesla has done some splits in the past, and we are going to roughly be looking back, I don't know, about 200 trading days. So I've, I've put a date filter here just to look um, backwards about 200 days, just so we have like a really manageable amount of data. And of course, with technical analysis, you're looking at charting and generally you're not looking back over like an immensely huge period of time. So that's why I've done that. And very simply using the add column index column function up here, I have added an index column and I'll show you why I use that. And we do have our date column as well as Unix date time, which is totally useless to me. So I've turned it into a real date column. So Let's jump into our actual data model. Back in Power BI, looking at the model view, I have a, let me just get rid of these really quickly. I have a date table, like I do in most of my videos, very simply using the calendar function in DAX to just give me a really large table with all the available dates. I've established a bi-directional relationship to my stock price data, and that way I can use my date table on some of my charts. Jumping back into the actual dashboarding part, I've got a line chart here that was very simply made and I've drug in my column for adjusted close and I've used the date on the X axis. Okay, so let's build our first technical analysis indicator and we're gonna be building the simple moving average using DAX and Power BI. So what is a simple moving average? It is the average stock price over a specified number of days. So you could do 20 days, 50 days, 100 days, 200 days is very common. And what it does is it smooths out the short term price fluctuations. So for a stock like Tesla that is very volatile, uh, an SMA or simple moving average can be very useful. And what it does is it can indicate to you just simply upwards and downwards trends with the stock while ignoring some of the noise. So let's build it in DAX. Okay, we're making a new measure here. I'm gonna call it SMA or simple moving average 50 because I'm gonna do it over the trailing, or I guess it would be the preceding 50 days. And to do so, the function we're going to start with is an average X function. And we use the average X because it iterates over each row of the, the virtual table that you're feeding it. And the virtual table we're feeding it going to use the top n function 
it returns the top number of rows. So the first thing we need to give it is how many rows do you want to feed in? We're feeding it a date column. So if we're looking for a 50 day moving average, that number is 50. And then we are going to do a little filtering here so that as we move through time, AKA when we put it on a line chart and every day is different, it's always recalculating it for the proceed the preceding 50 days. So you have a moving average going through time. So I'm gonna use the all function, which of course removes all uh, filter context. And then I'm going to reapply some context here. My date time column less than or equal to, this is essentially doing kind of like a um, year to date through time. This is the same way you would do any sort of running total calculation. Uh, date time, and I'm using the date column from my historical stock price data table. And let's close that up and then let us do finish our top end here. We want to order by date, keep it in that order. And then let's do descending, close that, and then the actual numerical value we care about is the adjusted closing price. So let's press enter there and let's put it on our chart. Great. So as I said, the point is to smooth price movements and it is a 50 day smoothing average. Let's do a quick parameter here so that we can make it actually dynamic in our view here. So numeric range, let's call this moving average minimum of 10 maximum. Let's just call it 100 just because we're doing an example here. Increments of 10 days, add a slicer to the page. And then let's go into our measure. And instead of the static 50, Let's make it dynamic, moving average value, press enter, and let's drag it to 20, 30, and now we've got a dynamic, simple moving average. So let's move on to the next technical indicator. So the next indicator we're going to look at is called the MACD, and the long name for that is the Moving Average Convergence Divergence Indicator. And what it is, is it shows the relationship between two different moving averages. So you can use a simple moving average or an exponential moving average. Uh, we'll be using simple moving averages in the way that we build it. And what it means to traders is that when the MACD line crosses above or below what we call the signal line, it can indicate um, either it's kind of a bullish movement or a bearish movement. And it may be able to help predict where the stock price is moving. So let's build it. So the good news here for our DAX logic, if you're already getting tired of it, even though we just started the video, uh, we're using simple moving averages again. So the DAX I just explained in our 50 day simple moving average is going to more or less be the exact same as what we use for the MACD here. So I'm actually going to paste it in. We are going to be using a couple variables within our measure here. So the variable simple moving average 26 day Typically, traders like to use the relationship between the 12 day simple moving average and the 26 day. So we'll just kind of do the standard here. So I've already explained the average X and the top number of rows here. So obviously 26 and then 12 down here. And the function is exactly the same. You're returning those two simple moving averages and then you are taking the difference between the two. So next, let's make the signal line so that we can plot them both on the same line chart. So again, the same DAX applied in a slightly different way. We are again doing a simple moving average, except we're doing it on the actual MACD line instead of the adjusted close price. So that's going to be our signal line. And that's what we're going to compare against our MACD for our signals of what's bearish and what. Okay, let's do a simple copy paste of our line chart here, just so we have the same formatting. And then it kind of lines up on dates, which is useful. Get rid of that. Let us add our MACD here, as well as our signal line. 
get rid of the actual close price here. So our Y axis adjusts. And what we have here is exactly what we want to see. So when the MACD is above the signal line, so light blue above the dark blue and it crosses down lower, that's a bearish indicator. Of course, looking at Tesla stock, <laughs> you shouldn't have traded on that because you would have been wrong. And then when it crosses above, it's a bullish indicator. And that kind of does align with a with the trend up there. But a little touch here, that would have been a bearish sign. And then yeah, you're kind of coming down. So that's how you read the MACD. Let's move on to my personal favorite, the RSI. And the RSI is useful because it's a sort of constant measure between zero and 100. And it will indicate like stocks that are frothy, where there's potentially too many buyers or it's getting overbought. Um, and then if the RSI drops low, like below say 30 on that scale of zero to 100, that is signaling that it could be a pretty good deal or a bargain price to buy in. So let's build that one. In order to do the RSI, we need some sort of reference to the change of stock price every single day. And in order to get to that, right, we'd want to know what was the stock price on the prior day to that particular trading day. And that's why I've used the index column here so that I can use the index column and have a previous value column that aligns to the closing price on the previous day. So for example, here, 192.22, that's what we closed March 23rd on. And I've got it sitting down here on March 24th. And we will use this so that we can calculate an average over time of the gains, the daily gains and daily losses. And that's ultimately what feeds in the RSI. So it's a little bit more complicated DAX, but we're going to walk through it right now. Okay, so I zoomed in here because I really want to make this point. And rather than typing out this whole formula in front of you, I'd rather walk through the actual concepts and what's going on. So we are going to establish a variable, two variables really, the average gain and the average loss. And we're going to be looking over the 14 days previous to any point during our line chart, right? The RSI, like, like everything we're looking at, it's all charting and it's all got date on your X axis. So I think we're very familiar at this point of this use of average X with top end pulling the top amount of rows. And those rows are really just what, what dates are we including in our look back at any point in time? So it's 14 days in the past. And this is kind of, this is the same filter statement we had in our simple moving averages. It's just limiting that date and giving you kind of a running uh, running total through time. So the instead of you know putting adjusted close price here as our kind of numerical value we want to evaluate this average x over we are instead putting an if statement in here and we are saying if that daily change was greater than zero aka if the stock price went up then i want the change if it didn't go up i want zero right because we're looking at the average gain instead of the average loss the average loss variable is going to be the exact opposite and we want to know the actual value of that direction. So that's why we have put an absolute value parentheses around that change. So if, if it is a loss, right, if the change is less than zero, aka a negative move on the stock price, you've lost value, give me the value of that change because all the relative strength index is doing is it's evaluating the average gains over the average losses to give us that quote unquote relative strength index. And this is the function here. So this is what normalizes it to always be a value between zero and 100. So let's put this on a chart and then let's add a couple of reference lines. Again, let's save a little time and ensure our formatting is at least remotely close. Get rid of MACD. Let's add our RSI that we just made. And then let's also add a couple of lines here. 
and let me zoom back out. Sorry about that. And let's add a couple of lines here. Like I said, you have signals just like with the MACD. So on the bottom, you have just a static value of 30 because we've we've created this measure that's normalized for zero between 100. And the upper bound is going to be 70. And basically the way to read this here is any time that RSI is above 70, it's getting frothy, it's getting overbought. That could be a signal that it's about to come down. And then anytime it's down low, like here where it was, it's a sign that it's oversold when it's below 30 like that. So let's do a little formatting and then we've got one more technical analysis indicator to build. Okay, so now it's gonna feel like we've gone back in time and we're just repeating the exact same DAX, but guess what? It works and these are all doing similar things. So this new concept is called Bollinger Bands and Bollinger Bands are, they sit above and they sit below the stock's price chart and they're created using simple moving averages like we've already done in our very first indicator. And basically what it means similar to the RSI is when the stock price is the top band, it could be a little expensive when it touch, when it touches the bottom band, it could be a bargain. So it gives you a little bit of an idea of where the stock price might potentially move much like our other indicators. Looking at the actual measure here. So we've already done a simple moving average. Well, all the Bollinger, Bollinger bands are is it's essentially a measure of the standard deviations around the simple moving average of the past of a look back of 20 days. So we are making using the exact same DAX we've already done. We are making a 20 day simple moving average and I'm actually going to call it middle Bollinger band. And this is the middle line that we are going to be applying essentially a confidence interval with an upper bound and a lower bound. So press enter there. The next bit of DAX we are building here, like I said, we want a confidence interval around that middle line. So what do we need to do? We need to establish the standard deviation because that confidence interval is going to be two standard deviations above for that upper band, two standard deviations below for that lower band. So again, this DAX is going to look super familiar at this point, except we have changed our chief function here. So instead of average X, it's standard deviation X over the same 20 days, just like we had with our middle Bollinger band. And again, we are doing this all on the adjusted close stock price. And at this point, the math is just getting simpler. So to set our upper band, as I just explained, we have the middle plus two times that standard deviation that we just established. And you might guess, what is the lower band? Just turn this plus sign into a minus sign and let's throw it on the line chart. And here are our Bollinger bands and we can do a little formatting. I like to kind of go gray with a dashed line on those, but already we are kind of seeing some clear indicators. I mean, it rode that top line during that massive run up in June, touched again here before going on a downward trend. And then yeah, right when it hit that lower bound, it started another uptrend. So that's how you read the Bollinger Bands and they are pretty useful whenever you're looking at stock price over time. Okay, so I hope this was useful. We very quickly made a bunch of technical analysis indicators, kind of the main ones that you'd see on a lot of third party stock research websites. Um, I have a bunch of other videos that go into depth about pulling stock data into Power BI and manipulating the data and making cool dashboards. So be sure to check those out. Hit like, subscribe if you feel like it and leave some comments because I'm gonna be making more content and um, yeah, good luck.